Once this series is done, I might do a follow-up video to further analyze and theorize what this could all mean. I might do a follow-up video, follow-up video, follow-up video, follow-up video, follow-up video, follow-up video, follow-up video. Mac? Hello? I'm such a Mac? Where's Kyle? Mac? Where's Kyle? Come on. Mac! Egg. Are you okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm okay. You sure? Yeah. I mean, I haven't gotten a lot of sleep lately, but I'm okay. Alright. Yeah. Just checking on you. Yeah. Thanks for checking on me. Glad you care. No problem. Okay. So my last video on Limniscate did pretty well for me initially. That alongside the fact that Limniscate was clearly going somewhere by the fourth video made it all but certain I would be covering it again. Then my video got a second wind when the GDC trailer came out and got even more views. So yeah, here I am to talk about it again. What I didn't expect was a 28 page long script. So please forgive me if this video took a while. I've been working on this script since March just because I wanted to make sure I covered everything that happened. Just in case you decide to watch this video without knowing what Limniscate is, it is an ARG that started in February 2019 and ended in July of that same year. It acted as a promotion for the then upcoming release of I the Somnium Files. I the Somnium Files is a game by Spike Chunsoft, the developers of games such as the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, Jump Force, the Danganronpa series, and the Zeroscape series. I the Somnium Files is the newest game from the creator, writer, and director of Zeroscape, Kotaro Uchikoshi. Uchikoshi is a very niche creator that has gained a pretty sizable cult following, mainly in the West. Due to his style of writing, general Western influences, and the style of games he likes to make, he's never gained much of a following in his home country. Despite this, the Zeroscape franchise has a dedicated following in the West, and it's because of them he's able to continue making games. Before I begin, I want to explain what this video is. In the last one, I set out with the goal of analyzing and theorizing based on the first episode. However, this time I decided I wanted to analyze and summarize the entirety of Limniscate instead. The reason I won't be theorizing as much this time around is because I don't want to accidentally spoil myself or anyone else by coming up with a theory that ends up being true. Come up with your own ideas on what could happen, because I'd rather not sit here for too long and accidentally come up with the entire plot. The other reason I want to summarize it this time is because so much has happened not only on the YouTube channel, but also on Twitter. I'm sure that even if someone wanted to watch the channel in preparation for I, they could accidentally ignore the Twitter accounts and in the process lose out on important parts of the ARG. If you're coming to this video in order to prepare for the game, I'm still going to recommend watching each Lemniscate video before I talk about it. I'll be dividing this recap into sections that cover each video. When a title card pops up telling you what video I'll be talking about, I'd suggest you pause this one and go and watch it. I don't want to steal views from the work Spike Chunsoft has done, so if you haven't seen it, go watch it first. Just make sure you actually come back here because I put a lot of work into this video and would seriously appreciate it. I also won't be covering every little thing, but rather the elements I find notable or important. Also, also, unlike my last video where I gave credit to every single person who came up with something I did not, I just won't be able to do that this time. There's too much going on for me to properly source every single person. So instead, I want to thank everyone on Twitter, the Zeroscape subreddit, and both I Discord servers for analyzing the videos and throwing out several ideas. I especially want to thank both Mimsy630 and Lord Thantis of the I the Somnium Files wiki. This video wouldn't be as complete without all the work you guys put in archiving every single little piece of the game, as well as working directly with me on this video. Anyway, sorry for so much preamble, let's get on with it. The first episode of Limniscate all starts with a simple introduction. I already covered this video, so I'm just going to quickly go over everything I already talked about. 
If you want some more in-depth explanations of some of these things, I'll have a link in the description that will take you to my last video on the subject. Both Tessa's talent agency and YouTube channel are named after a Limnus Gate. A Limnus Gate is a thing that is used in algebraic geometry and looks like a pair of eyes. It also looks like the symbol for infinity, which makes sense considering Uchikoshi wrote various entries in the Infinity series. This may or may not be related, but I feel it's worth noting. I'm just gonna err on the side of not related. When it comes to our world, Tessa is clearly a virtual YouTuber. She isn't a real person, but rather a 3D model of an anime girl being played by someone in a mocap suit, much like Kizuna Ai. While I initially created the theory of Tessa being a virtual YouTuber in the world of Ai the Somnium Files, Uchikoshi has confirmed that this is not the case in a 4Gamer interview. She is a real person in the game, she just also happens to be a YouTuber. Tessa's various names are also of note. Let's start with Iris. If you add two letters to that name, you get Osiris, the Egyptian god of the afterlife, the underworld, and rebirth. Iris is also the name of the Greek goddess of rainbows, who in one myth goes to deliver a message to the Greek god Hypnos, whose Roman name is Somnus. This may seem pointless, but the mythological connections to Limnus Gate will become more and more apparent as the series goes on. The connections are mainly to Egyptian mythology, but there are still some Roman and Greek connections. As for Aesep, there are two connections to Egyptian mythology. First, if you remove the letter A, you get Set, the god of chaos, the desert, storms, violence, and foreigners. Aset is also the original Egyptian name for the goddess Isis. Finally, there's Tessa, which I'm going to save this for later when I feel it's more important to explain the potential connection it has with the grander scheme of things. As for the song Invincible Rainbow Arrow, there is only one thing of note. The lyric, the golden goddess with wings of rainbow, is likely a reference to the Greek goddess Iris, whom I mentioned previously. I'm also going to go ahead and establish the fact that Tessa has a Twitter account, but I'll be getting into that later. Also, in-universe, it's not Twitter, but Twitter. This is a pun on the verb to witter, which is to talk pointlessly and at an unnecessary length. If you've played an Uchikoshi game before, this should be pretty fitting. There is also a Japanese account called A underscore set underscore on, which is a spaced out version of Aceton, the Japanese equivalent of Tessa. And yes, there is a Japanese YouTube account simply named Limnus Gate Japan. I won't be talking about the foreign side of things as it's nowhere near as flushed out. I will, however, point out notable differences. And yeah, that's it for the first video. Let's move on to... First off, Monokuma is somehow the greatest mascot character ever, yet is only number two. Also, Adorabbit is clearly an alternate version of Zero the Third from Virtue's Last Reward, the second game in the Zeroscape series. I also want to point out that while I previously had no idea who the hell Tama was, I have since learned that Tama comes from another Spike Chunsoft game, 428 Shibuya Scramble. These have nothing to do with the ARG and I just wanted to point them out. Now on to more Egyptian references! Tessa goes on a tangent about the Eye of Wajit. Basically, the Eye of Wajit is the Eye of Horus. The story goes that Horus wanted to fuck set up after their father Osiris died so he could have the throne. During the fight, he gets his eye knocked out. This eye flew around Egypt gathering wisdom and knowledge before it was found and healed by Thoth, the Egyptian god of the moon and time. Tessa calls the Eye of Wajit the All-Seeing Eye, which is another name for the Eye of Providence. Please see the back of a US $1 bill for more. Also see the Illuminati. The last thing of note is that Tessa introduces us to the man who both runs Limnusgate and produced Invincible Rainbow Arrow, Renju Okuyura. It's in this third video that we are introduced to the first recurring character in the series who isn't Tessa, Ota Matsushita, who is her friend and fanboy. Much like Tessa, he also has a Twitter account, but he mostly just replies to her. Outside of the fact that his Twitter has been tweeting since Lemon Escape started, there's nothing of note here just yet. 
Ota writes this really creepy and over-the-top poem to Tessa, to which your boy gets hit with a yikes and is promptly ignored when he tries to confess. Honestly, I wouldn't even think she's his friend if not for her talking with him on Twitter and saying they are in this video. He leans way more on the creepy fanboy side than he does friend side. However, as time has gone on, he does go back and forth a lot more. I didn't trust him at first, but now I'm more confident in him actually being her friend and not just some creep. He also seems like a pretty cool dude who likes porn and stuff, so hey, he's cool in my book. A permanent fire, cold frost on the pyre, fruit never expires, you've seen in your eyes. Episode 4 takes place in the same abandoned amusement park we saw in the reveal trailer for I. According to Tessa, it's in the Kabasaki district, which, unlike a lot of districts in the game, is not real. However, there is an area south of Tokyo that fits this picture said to be Kabasaki. Six years ago, the amusement park was made off-limits following a nearby chemical plant explosion. Going back to Anime Expo 2018, the words chemical plant explosion is one of the key words in the background of the original announcement trailer. After Tessa tells us a spooky scary campfire story, Jesus fucking Christ! she brings up a group called Nizet Laws, also known as Nyes. Nyes is a devil-worshipping cult that, judging from the picture, worships the demon Baphomet. The group is made up of politicians, businessmen, and more who all partake in ritual sacrifices, torture, and dancing around satanic bonfires. Shortly after she starts talking about the group, the video starts glitching. A message pops up saying, stop this broadcast immediately or suffer the consequences. There are also a few pieces of footage at the end of the video that don't seem like they were intended to be left in, such as Tessa turning off the camera and a few seconds of nothing. Also, Tessa's mom looks like Akane in Zero Time Dilemma. So there's that. Before continuing on, I want to give some context as to the likely inspiration behind Nizet Laws. Around 2015-2016, there was a conspiracy theory that was flying around Japan involving a group called Zoltaxian. Zoltaxian was a term that appeared in some responses from Siri to random questions. Siri described Zoltaxian as a quote, fictional planet with chocolate rivers, trees, and lakes. Of course, this led to a bunch of theories flying around various Japanese blogs, many of which suggested Zoltaxian was a secret AI-led society. Zoltaxian spelled backwards is Nizet Laws. Siri spelled backwards is Iris. A few other things I want to mention involve the reveal trailer for I. Both the phrases Chocolate Collector and Secret Society Nizet Laws appear in that trailer, though I personally was unable to find them. Also, Aset's favorite snack is a brand of chocolate. Okay, so let's get into the bits you won't find on YouTube. At first, Tessa's Twitter didn't have a whole lot worth noting. All she really did was retweet things related to Uchikoshi and Spike Chunsoft, and responded to people who tweeted at her. However, after her fourth video was uploaded, Tessa tweeted, How weird. It wasn't like that when I uploaded the video. So this isn't related to Lemniscate per se, but I wanted to quickly cover this interview considering it helps explain some of the story and context behind how this channel came to be. Well, in-universe that is. In-universe, Tessa's YouTube channel is made by both Lemniscate and Spike Chunsoft, the developer behind I. Uchikoshi met Mr. Okiura and they both worked together to produce and manage Tessa. Whether or not Spike Chunsoft and Uchikoshi will actually be in the game is beyond me, but I'm gonna say this is an ARG exclusive thing. 
In either case, I think this is some important context as to why Tessa is so chummy with her real world creator. As for other things from this interview, we learn two of them. One, when asked what he does to keep surprising fans, Uchikoshi says, Isn't surprising yourself more important than surprising others? And to do that, every night before I go <sighs> to sleep I down three gallons of tequila. Trust me, if you do that, you'll forget everything that happened that day. Which means that when you wake up the next morning, every idea you have, even if it's an old one, will seem fresh and exciting. Number two, Tessa has shit taste based on who she thinks is the best girl in Danganronpa. Hashtag fuck Junko. I'm not kidding. I fucking hate Junko. I don't think she's a good character. Uchikoshi also insists that Iris is in fact real and not a virtual idol. Despite this, he wants anyone who is skeptical of virtual idols to fill your bathtub with hot water, sink in, and then chug three gallons of tequila. If you do, your neocortex will go numb, and you will be more willing to accept idols like Aset. If your pupils dilate, so will your heart. In this video, we're told about Tessa's best friend, Mizuki. We're not given a whole lot of information about her, but we are told two things. One, much like Tessa who doesn't have a father, Mizuki doesn't have a mother. And two, Mizuki has a roommate who is teaching her martial arts. We're also told about Ota's mom, Mayumi, who I swear to God looks like she should be Mizuki's mom and not his. Mayumi runs the family diner where Tessa is recording. Mayumi also doesn't like her and thinks she's a witch. Sounds like she's fun at parties. Tessa starts talking about the omelette rice Mayumi makes. This rice is decorated with an ankh before being turned to the side to resemble an eye. An ankh is an Egyptian hieroglyphic that is used to represent life. Now for the real juicy part of the video. Tessa randomly starts talking about knives again. The way she talks about them, saying things like, that's who we're dealing with, as well as the fact that she just randomly starts talking about them for no reason feels more like a cry for help or a warning than a simple explanation. She also says Nyes will do anything to get what they want. One theory is that Nyes is controlled by aliens who are trying to trick humanity into thinking they're living in a simulation. Then, right as she says the word simulation, the video starts glitching up again. The video goes haywire and eventually cuts together clips to make Tessa say, Just kidding! I'm making it all up! As she says this, Tessa's irises go black. A message reads, You will stop this foolishness. This is your final warning. The video returns as Ota and Mizuki get back, resulting in the end of the video. I want to note that this video's thumbnail is scratchy looking and glitched out because it's a good segue into... If you look at the thumbnails for videos 4 and 5, you'll notice how strange looking they are. Both pictures are scratchy and glitched out, while the latter contains what are clearly QR codes that, when lined up, create six codes. However, it's actually three sets of just two codes. One code links to the website for I the Somnium Files, while the other seems to be a broken link that refers to something called DMATH. Some think DMATH might be discrete mathematics, which is used in artificial intelligence, while others think it could potentially have been intended to be death. Following the last video, Ota and Tessa posted a string of tweets talking about the glitches. Are you at home? Stay right there, I'm coming over. Don't answer your phone or talk to anybody but me, okay? What is this? I swear this was not in the video when I uploaded it. What's going on? 
Should I take my videos down? I'm really scared. I changed the passwords to my YouTube channel and Twitter account. Ocha's at the door. I'm gonna go offline for a bit. Thanks for all your concern, everyone! A day later, the pair returned to Twitter with the following. I'm okay. Thanks, everyone. Sorry to make you worry. I feel much better. You know what? This is all really silly. I talked it over with Ota, and this is just some stupid prank. That's right, Tessa! Obviously just ignorant haters who saw your shining star and wanted to tear it from the sky. But we won't let them, will we? In our soul, the one hope, the one truth, what if we believe we can? We can make miracles. In this video, Tessa goes on a tour of Tokyo, starting at the Ikume Shrine, which is supposedly home to a fruit that grants immortality. She then goes to a bar in Golden Yokocho, where she meets a very, very nice person, just delightful. From there, she ends up in the warehouse district where I finally realized this video exists to show off areas you'll be going to and I, and that there isn't a whole lot to be gained by pointing them out. The end of the video is where things get really interesting, however. Tessa announces she'll be going to GDC 2019 in San Francisco, which ran from March 18th to the 22nd, where she'll be giving us an all-access report on the event. In other words, I the Somnium Files is getting a major info dump. Afterwards, she realizes she doesn't know where she is before being surrounded by guards and running away. This leads to her bringing up Nyes again, and of course, the video starts glitching out. Nyes apparently sells organs to societal elites who may use them in demonic rituals. As the video glitches, a code can be seen. 11101011111. The first thing that comes to mind is this being binary. But what makes it weird is the fact that traditional binary has 8 numbers, while this code has 9. Despite this, if we treat it like traditional binary, it can be translated to a division sign, which is also known as an obelisk. An obelisk can not only look like two dots in a line, but also a cross, which is often used in text to indicate a person is dead. Another way to interpret the code is to convert it from binary to decimal. The code then goes from 11110111 to 495. The fourth letter of the alphabet is D, the ninth is I, and the fifth is E. Then the video just kinda ends. No sign off or anything. Now that might seem like the end of the video, but I want to bring your attention to the description. Up to this point, each description is clearly written by Tessa either because they use first-person pronouns or because she leaves her signature at the end. This description, however, could have been written by someone else. Not only is it written in the third person, but certain lines feel ominous if you take the video and recent events into account. Of course, this video does have a narrator which would justify all of this, but lines like, We are always right behind. Nothing is off limits. She's going somewhere she's never been before. And... Immortality. Wouldn't that be a dream? Feels super suspect to me. She could have been the one to write the description, but these lines don't feel like something jolly old Tessa would say. Shortly after the video is uploaded, Tessa responds to the cut outro. That's weird. Looks like my outro got cut off and there's some weird camera issues. I'll re-upload the video. I noticed that too. Do you want to come over and have me look at it? Maybe I can fix it. Hmm. For whatever reason, I can't find the original video file for this. Sorry everyone. Keep an eye out for my next video. From here, she tweets a few inconsequential things, like making sure to back up her videos in the future, and tweets about going to San Francisco for GDC. Also, Tessa has good taste in anime. Come March 12th, Tessa heads out to the airport to get on the plane. She doesn't post again for 24 hours. On an unrelated note, Spike Chunsoft announces that Uchikoshi will be going to GDC!
a 66 second long video of Tessa's home is uploaded. At the 6 second mark, the video glitches. At the 18 second mark, it glitches again before the camera refocuses. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. Before this second glitch, the picture frame on the wall is straight, while afterwards it's crooked. The video glitches one last time before going dark. During the glitch, an image appears. This picture is the floor plan of the Moscone Center in San Francisco, the building GDC is held in. The description of the video is nothing more than a file name. m715.mkv This is probably a reference to Matthew 7.15, which reads, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. It could also be Micah 7.15, which reads, According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I shew unto him marvelous things. As for .mkv, it is a video format known as Matroshka Video. It's named after Matroshka dolls, aka the Russian dolls that, when opened, contain an exact replica. The thumbnail includes another QR code that links you to the Wikipedia page for Baphomet, the demon Nye's worships. Meanwhile, on the Japanese Limnuscape channel, the description just contains a few words, which can be translated to Don't Watch. To go back to the video before this one, Aset's Reservations Unknown, it was updated with a new thumbnail, going from this to this. Tessa, what is this? Can you call me? Please? Oda, have you heard from Tessa at all? Not since she left for San Francisco. I left her a voicemail and like a million Nile messages, but nothing. I can't get in touch with Aset. I'm very worried about her. Aset, if you read this, please contact me. I hope nothing bad will happen. Okay guys, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to try to contact Tessa a few more times tonight. I'll let everyone know tomorrow. Okay, I spoke with Tessa's mom and she says she can't get a hold of her either. But she for sure left to go to the airport. Ask her mom for her flight number and call the airport. Have you tried contacting Lemnuskate? Like her manager maybe. Do you know what hotel she was supposed to be staying at? Maybe you can see if she checked in or leave a message for her there when she does. Maybe we could track her cell phone. Thanks for your suggestions, guys. I'm really scared. But I promise, I will find her. I'm going to protect her, no matter what! Okay, I stayed up all night. But I finally got some answers. I called the hotel she was supposed to go to, and the airline. They haven't seen her either. Guys? I don't think she ever got on that plane. Did a little more digging. Tessa is in Tokyo, I'm sure of it! I'm sorry I haven't been more active. I just don't feel very good. I, I can't say more. I really can't. I have to find her. She's more important than any of you understand. But you'll see. You'll hear her music just like I did. Then you'll see. As soon as I arrived in San Francisco, I started searching for Tessa. Guys, I think I found something. I didn't find her exactly, but her phone is connected to a Wi-Fi signal somewhere near the water. I can't narrow it down much, but a name keeps coming up. Kramer Diavolo. Does this make sense to anyone? Okay, well, Diavolo means devil and Gabriel Kramer studied something called Devil's Curve, which, get this, makes a lamb to skate on the graph. What the fuck? Perhaps you should go to Lemniscate directly. They were in charge of ASAT's videos, yeah. You think Lemniscate has something to do with this? I met David Cage last night. Unbelievable. It's so hyper awesome. He was a very kind, 
Wonderful person. I was so excited that the matter of investigation was almost gone from my head. But my duty is to find Tessa. I went back to search for her immediately. I followed up on that name. Thanks, everyone. I found something I think is linked to Tessa. I think it has at least something to do with what happened. It's a series of numbers that come up all the time with Kramer Diavolo. I don't think it's a credit card number. Maybe a routing number? Or an address? Whatever it is, it was buried in rows and rows of numbers. But this one comes up all the time next to Kramer Diavolo. Reversing it and using a A1Z16 decoding cipher gives us Oak Era Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. You might want to get there ASAP or she might get cold. That's in the Harbor Warehouse District! I know you want to find her ASAP, but please don't rush in alone. Bringing Mizuki or anyone else you really trust would be smart. I don't trust anyone else with this! I don't even trust myself! Tessa is everything to me, do you understand? Why doesn't anyone understand? I do understand she's important, but please know Tessa wouldn't want you to get hurt either trying to help her. Sorry, I'm just really upset right now. I'll figure this out. I finally found out the place where she seems to be getting caught. But she was not in there. Where has she gone? Is she safe? Tomorrow, I might be able to see someone who knows the truth in the Moscone Convention Center. Her friend Oda seems to think she's still in Tokyo, specifically the Okira Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. You might want to wrap up your business in San Fran and jet back home ASAP. Really? Am I being manipulated by bogus information? Or is this world starting to distort? Ota, did you get any clues? I got the information that Tessa is still in Japan. Please save her. You are our only hope. I know what I have to do. I spent all day psyching myself up to do this. I don't want to admit it, but... I'm terrified right now, but it's time. Nothing is going to stop me. I found the cold storage warehouse. I'm inside. And this is where the trail ends. She has to be here somewhere. What the fuck? What the fuck? Where the fuck is she? This video was posted shortly after Ota arrived at the warehouse. If you don't count the standalone music video, this is the 8th one uploaded to the channel. The contents are clear. Tessa is dead. Her left eye gouged out. Blood splattered all over the camera. All of this done by a polar bear. The name of the video, which I am incapable of pronouncing, is the name of the ancient Egyptian funerary text known as the Book of the Dead. This book was filled with magic spells that were used to help one's soul pass through the underworld and into the afterlife. A direct translation of the name would be Utterances of Coming Forth in the Day. Meanwhile, the Japanese version of the video is called Final Somnium. While it seems as though the content of this video is pretty succinct, there are a few details I've noticed that confuse the situation even more. Prior to the saw cutting Tessa in half, you can see that she's actually breathing, meaning that in this moment she is just unconscious. I wouldn't be surprised if the pain from getting her eye gouged out is what made her pass out. Another thing is when the polar bear man moves towards the camera, you can actually see a white light move from behind him and to the right. It's impossible to tell what it is exactly, but it could imply the polar bear man isn't working alone.
I happened to see a girl who looks really similar to Tessa near the Moscone Center just now. As I thought, the information I got was really correct. She is in San Francisco now. Did you happen to see the video uploaded to her channel? What's going on? I'm really sorry, but I cannot understand what everyone is saying. What is the video? Where can I see it? Uchikoshi has no idea what people are talking about. To him, the last video on the channel is 6. He insists that Tessa is alive and well, though he is open to the idea of being in a dimension where the video doesn't exist and she is alive. This actually brings me to the potential reasoning behind the name Tessa. While Iris references eyes and Aset could reference Isis, Tessa could be a reference to a Tesseract, a theoretical fourth dimensional cube. And no, it's not a reference to the MCU, Marvel didn't invent the concept of a Tesseract. Besides, the MCU reference comes later. Regardless, Tessa is dead, and Ota stops tweeting. Whoa, I'm so jet-lagged from GDC, but I'm back! It was so much fun hanging out with Uchi! Get ready for my new video tonight! Tessa? Is that you? Ota returns to Twitter shortly after Tessa does. He says that after his last tweet, he left the warehouse after being unable to find her. While he did see the Book of the Dead video, he didn't see anything left from it. Just as confused as us, Ota accepts that maybe she did go to GDC before saying he needs to talk to her. He shoots her a tweet asking to Nihil him, which is an in-universe parody of LINE, the text messaging service that is mainly popular in Japan. The video opens with glitches. For a few frames, you can even see the same blood splatter from the murder tape. The background music for the opening is different. The subtitles are a different shade of pink compared to past videos. Even Aset's opening catchphrase is different. In the past, she would say, good evening, good morning, and hello, say her name is Tessa, aka Aset, and then follow it up with, you bet. Now she says, good evening, good morning, and welcome, say her name is Aset, aka Tessa, and completely removing the you bet. She asks if people still remember her after being away for two weeks. She claims she was abducted before saying that came out wrong. As she says this, her personality changes, becoming more somber and serious. However, following a jump cut, her personality goes back to normal. Before moving forward, many people theorize this version of Aset is an imposter. Because of this, I'm going to refer to this one as B-Set and the original as Tessa. This way it'll be clear which one I'm talking about. Now, let's see what B-Set has to say about GDC. First, I fucking love Uchikoshi photoshops. I don't know why, but Uchikoshi this entire time has been a blast. The things he says and does remind me a lot of Yoko Taro, who is actually a friend of Uchi. I wouldn't be surprised if he got the idea from him. B-Set also calls Uchi cute and handsome, which... Man, I wonder who's writing these videos. Here, B-Set's personality changes again. She wonders if she could have just not gone, as she would have preferred to stay at home due to being more introverted. Another jump cut, and she's back to normal, saying she still had a lot of fun. Strange for someone to act so down about having gone even though you already know you had fun. During the trip, Uchi lost his phone, which is apparently a reference to him actually having lost his phone a lot of the years. As B-Set talks about Uchi finding it again, her personality changes for the third time. She talks about how he shouldn't be walking around alone at night, and that he'll soon just be another dreamer. She then goes on about how she feels like she's still catching up with the past few weeks. Then another jump cut happens, and she goes back to normal. Much like the intro, the outro is also messed up. While before, Aset would say, keep your eyes open and stay tuned, B-Set says, stay tuned and keep your eyes open. B-Set also doesn't make any mention of being abducted. Her call to action to get people to subscribe is more aggressive, saying, make sure to subscribe instead of, please subscribe. 
as well as saying, you better subscribe instead of, if you don't subscribe. She caps the video off saying, thank you so much for the views, which in my opinion feels slightly more scummy than the previous thank you for watching, because it seems like she cares more about the view numbers instead of people simply watching and enjoying her content. The video glitches as it ends. However, what's really strange is that B-Set disappears before the background cuts to black. Going over to the Japanese version of the video, the description is written as if it was made by someone unfamiliar with Japanese. The word Konichiwa is written with the standard character for wa and not the character ha. I'm not going to go deeper in on why this is incorrect because I'm not here to teach you the Japanese language. The last thing I'm going to point out is that B-Set refers to Uchikoshi with more informal names, such as Uchikoshi Producer, Uchi P, and Uchi Ni. This is strange because in earlier videos she would simply call him Uchikoshi-san, which is way more formal. The first major thing to happen following the GDC video is that Uchikoshi claims the man in the video wasn't him. Because he can't throw up rainbows. However, he does say he didn't lose his cell phone. Later on, Ota says he hung out with B-Set and that she said she was just super tired and jet lagged. B-Set also says she'll be ready to put on a performance again soon. Read a fucking word. Ota is dropping an album called Automatic under his new rap name, Ukato. Includes songs such as Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in the Dungeons of Rap? and ReZero Times For Your Mind. B Set is also about to drop a new hit single, Your Sister Who Isn't Blood Related, with lyrics by Ukato. Get fucking hyped. On April 3rd, B-Set tweets out, I'm a surrogate. I'm archetypal and itinerant. These lines are lyrics from the song Proxy by Tesseract. She would later delete this tweet. Light up the torch to guide you and your This video is much like the last. Glitches in a backwards intro, as well as a glitched ending. However, B-Set feels much more toned down to me compared to every other video. In general, she's a lot calmer and not as loud. The entire thing feels less energetic as there isn't anywhere near as much editing as before. A lot of this video feels like an introduction to the characters that will be major players in I that just haven't been introduced yet. As a result, there isn't much here to discover that could relate to the ARG. Instead, I'll give you a bit of trivia. The Sync Machine shares a name with the game's project title, Project Sync. I thought it was pronounced P-Sync until now. I can also tell you that if you flip the B in Abyss upside down, you get Apis, the name of an Egyptian god. Apis is a sacred animal who is the son of Hathor, a primary deity. Apis initially played a role in Hathor's worship, being sacrificed and reborn. Later, it served as an intermediary between humans and other powerful deities such as Bata, Osiris, and Atum. Initially, the thumbnail for the Abyss video did not appear on Twitter. While I thought this was intentional because of how Abyss is supposed to be a secret, it turned out to actually just be a Twitter glitch that fixed itself a few days later. Regardless, it fits. B-Set posts more song lyrics, this time from the song Forget Not by Nay Oblivious Karis. Renaissance of death echoes, eternally. All's not lost, it echoes, it echoes, forget not. From what I could find, the song is about the ones we lose in life, both mourning their loss and celebrating their impact. Like with the first lyric, this one is later deleted. A few days later, B-Set posts even more song lyrics. This time they're from Ocean Planet by Gojira. I see the smallest part of me. My mind is alive, but I'll never bow to this again. 
This song acts as the opening to Gojira's third studio album, From Mars to Sirius, which is about mankind destroying their current planet and traveling to the next. The song is about the protagonist seeing visions of the end of the world and the need to travel to another planet. These lyrics are also deleted. Hey, guess what? Fuck you, song lyrics! This time they're from Heaven and Week by Maudlin of the Well, which is a band that often incorporates occult themes within their music. Secretive men slowly insert the dagger again. Take a guess what happens with this tweet. You get the drill by now, glitched opening, backwards intro, glitched ending, yada yada. This video is a continuation of the last one, as b said is trying out the sync machine after Uchikoshi insisted on it. The dream she explores is of the amusement park from the original announcement trailer, meaning this is also the amusement park from the trespassing video. The dream she is in is someone else's. As for who's... I, I, I don't know. It's probably a spoiler they'd rather keep for the game. B set talks about her avatar in the third person. This could simply be a joke because haha I'm pretty, but it could mean something more. For the most part, this video doesn't offer a whole lot outside of showing off sinks. There is a Danganronpa reference though. Let's take a peek at the sink! Hi, welcome back to B Set Spotify. Up next is more lyrics on Twitter. This time they're from the song Limbs by Agalok. Every sullen bow, it sings. These bows were said to be lost, torn, unearthed, and broken. The song is about how all life is connected. A few days later, B Set posts a sixth lyric, this time from the song While We Sleep by Insomnium. Slow down. We need to slow down. We need to slow down so I can catch you. This song is about how someone struggles to let go of their significant other and how you have to keep moving forward in life. Both of these lyrics are deleted. It's around this time that Ota asks B set about the lyrics she keeps posting in the middle of the night. She responds by saying she can't just tell him because it wouldn't be any fun. Ota points out a few interesting things about the lyrics. First, all of them were posted on the 6 minute mark. Lyric 1 was posted on April 3rd at 3.06am Pacific Standard Time. Lyric 2 was posted April 5th at 2.16am. Lyric 3 on April 8th at 1.26am. Lyric 4 on April 10th at 1.26am. Lyric 5 on April 12th at 5.06am. And Lyric 6 on April 17th at 4.06 a.m. If you take each posting time, remove the zeros, and make the sixes a dash, you get 3, 21, 12, 12, 5, 4. Put this string of text into an A1Z26 decoder, and you get the word culled. Ota's other observation is how B said, quote, would only tweet out part of the lyric like she was starting from that specific word or letter. If you only include the first letter of each lyric, you get irises. Ota also says the lyrics of the whole songs are interesting as well, though this could simply be talking about the general themes. In other words, dreams, memories, etc. Iris's cold seems to be what we needed to get out of these tweets, as Ota seemingly confirms it by responding to the suggestion. To cull can mean two different things to gather together items or ideas, and to kill the weaker animals in a group in order to reduce their numbers. It could refer to the stolen left eyes that have been taken by the serial killer in the main game. The killer is both culling together eyes while also culling humans. The first thing I noticed with this video is the weird fisheye lens. It immediately shows that something is wrong. 
In this video, we get to see inside B-Set's dreams, and... Oh boy, there is a lot going on here. The video cuts back and forth between someone walking through the forest and various other shots. These shots include a drawing of a mouse on a bloody TV screen, a foldable chair in a room with chemicals sitting on the lower shelf behind it, windows with missing glass, a hole in the ceiling, a drawing of a butterfly ripped in half on a TV, two mannequins standing next to a bookshelf, a shot showing off both the windows and the hole in the ceiling, a wide shot showing off the chair, chemical shelf, and mannequins from before, as well as a barrel, a stool, more books, and various jars, a Chinese dragon statue with a yellow gem in its tail, a medium shot of a TV going from static to a drawing of a stabbed bird before cutting closer to the TV, an RGB test sequence, a drawing of a cat that seems to have been shot in the head, a shot of an iris in a black nothingness, and the same iris on an eyeball, optic nerve still attached, in the hand of what seems to be the polar bear man. Eventually, it cuts to a hole dug in the ground that the camera is seemingly pushed into due to the sudden and violent movement forward. B-Set laughs before asking if we really didn't know. She quotes her usual introduction line before saying pathetic and ending the video by claiming, she'll be seeing you. Do you have any idea what it's like to have your own mind poison you? Tessa, please. What are you talking about? Can I help? I want to help, please. I refuse to let myself fade. And Ota, I know this must be painful for you, but you should know, this isn't about you. It was never about you. Be seeing you, but you won't see me. Hey everyone, did you know when blood freezes to ice, it shimmers like fireworks? Please, just talk to me. Just let me know you're safe. You can't do this again. I can't do this again. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where I'm ending part one. This whole thing ended up being way longer than I expected, and it's just too much work for one video. Part two will be up hopefully in September. It just depends on how things go. My life is getting a little crazy right now, and I might not have as much time as I'd like to work on such a big project. If part two is out by the time you watch this one, I'll have it linked during the end card so you can click it and continue on with Uchi Koshi's Wild Ride. I want to thank my actors for Ota and Tessa, Nova Arby and Dia. I'll include links to places where you can see more of their work as well as contact them for whatever it is you might want some voice actors for. And thank you to my roommate for helping me edit this beast of a project. Anyway, this has been Jack's Back of Maka. I am Maka. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and tell me down below all about that Wikipedia article you found after hitting the random button. Subscribe and hit the bell so you can know when part 2 is out, and I'll see you guys next time for whatever the hell it is I come up with next. Actually, we know exactly what's up next. <laughs>